Seven. At this time, we'd like to call the November 15, 2011 Board of Zoning and Appeals meeting to order. Will you please stand to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'd like to introduce the board members starting on my left. Rita Young. Todd Chernick. Scott Kilgore. Gary Willis. Walt Recook. This time we need to approve the August meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion for approval. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor of approval of the August meeting minutes. Please raise your right hand. Let it be known that it was abstained. Four yeses and Scott Kilgore abstained. The Board of Zoning Appeals is a quasi-legal board composed of resident volunteers of the City of Milton. The board is charged with hearing requests for variances from the standards of the zoning ordinance and appeals of administrative determinations. With regard to decisions on primary variances, the board's basis for decisions is provided by these four considerations. A. Relief if granted would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. And B. There are such extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property that the literal or strict application of the ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography, or other extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the variance applicant. And C, relief of granite would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding property. And D, that the public safety, health, and welfare are secured and that substantial justice is done. Our first petition tonight is V11-018 to allow a neighborhood recreational court, accessory structure, fencing, and parking to be located less than 100 feet from the property line, and two, to allow a neighborhood pool, pool equipment, and deck to be located less than 100 feet from property line. Angela, will you please present? This is petition number V11-018. The site, 128895 12, Donegal Lane, is the recreation center of the Victor Crest subdivision. Victor Crest is a 33-lot single-family subdivision located in the Northwest Fulton Overlay. It is zoned CUP Community Unit Plan for 2004-Z0144. The eastern property line of the common area is bordered by a stream and its buffers. The property slopes down to a detention pond, which faces the Hopewell Place Drive frontage. The applicant, mm -hmm. Sharp Residential, is constructing a 4.9-acre amenity center, including a pool house, pool, tennis courts, and parking. The property is bordered on the north and south by single-family lots, including lots in the Vickery Crest subdivision. A land disturbance permit was issued by, for the amenity area in June of 2008. The pool house was approved by the Design Review Board in September of 2011. It wasn't until the applicant applied for a permit for the pool that staff informed them that the pool and pool deck had to be at least 100 feet from all adjoining property lines. Section 64.1 uh, definitions of the city zoning ordinance states that property line means a line which separates a lot from other lots or a lot from other from right, right of ways. Staff determined that the 100-foot setback referred to property adjacent to interior lots, lots outside of the subdivision, and right-of-ways. The 15-space parking lot was about 8 feet from the north and south property lines. The 1675 by 30-foot tennis courts are 45 feet from the closest middle and adjoining property line and 55 feet from the closest westerly closest point to the westerly adjoining property line and 17 feet at its closest point to the easterly property line. While the property to the east is currently vacant, there is an occupied house adjacent to the west of the amendment. The land
landscape plan approved with the LDP shows a 10-foot landscape strip to be planted with red maples and primary. Section 641602B3B and 1609B2B of the zoning ordinance state that recreational courts, accessory structures, fencing, parking, pools, pool equipment, and decks must be at least 100 feet from all adjoining property lines. Since all of the elements of the amenity center are within 100 feet of the east and west property lines, a variance is required. Design Review Board Courtesy Review. On October 14th, the DRB offered the following comments. Provide a very heavy landscape screen and adjacent to the residential properties and inform uh, the applicant should inform the BZA of the letter of support um, that they stated that they had from the owner of the existing house. Additional department comments, building plan review, site plan review, and DOT had no issues. Um, the arborist uh, offered this comment. The amenity area is required to have a 10-foot landscape strip. The majority of the area is screen. Vegetation can be added to fill in the gaps. Standards for consideration. Um, the applicant responds as follows to the four uh, standards for consideration. Relief, if granted, would not offend the spirit, of, spirit or intent of the ordinance as we are well over 100 feet from the only property outside of the subdivision. Re relief would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties as the proposed amenities within 100 feet of the property lines intended use is for those future property owners. The proposed amenities will not injure public health, safety, or welfare. The proposed amenity construction will comply with all relevant construction codes as applicable and will require City of Milton inspections. Should the board choose to approve this application, staff recommends the following conditions. The amenity area should be screened from adjoining residential properties. A planning plan is to be approved by the City Arborist. And this concludes the staff presentation. Thank you. Any questions to staff from the board members? I have one. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Angela, when this property was zoned for uh, CUP, it looks like in 2004, mm -hmm. was there any submission of a plan for the amenity area provided with that plat and, and rezoning? It was shown on the um, Zoning. It was shown on the LDP. I don't know if it was shown to this detail. Um, you know, parking and all of that. Um, I think the size of the pool changed a little, uh, but the, the area itself was shown. So, was there, in your opinion, was there a material change to what was planned for this amenity area, or did the adoption of the Milton um, ordinances regarding buffers uh, create this issue? Um, that's that's what's weird about it. It's been shown like this all along, um, and but nothing changed. Um, this was a Fulton County rule also, but evidently they there are other subdivisions where this wasn't enforced. Um, when we you know went back in the ordinance and started looking around, the past two directors have. Um, decided that per the definition and the question is whether or not that hundred feet applies to every property line or just property lines like perimeter property lines and it's been the director's um, opinion that it applies to any property lines but it's it's like I said it's always been shown like that okay it's just now like uh oh we need to that we decided to enforce it. Okay. I mean, we did the same thing with Crooked Creek. So. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, two questions. Number one, um, in your recommendation for conditions, it says inform the BCA of a letter of support from the homeowners, from the owners of the existing house. Which side is this existing house on? If I'm, say, I'm knee deep in the pool looking towards the road. So on your big site plan would be lots. So on the left. Okay. And um, it looks like just looking at the pictures and such, 
that the setback of that house seems to be almost almost back behind uh, the parking spaces. Is that correct? I'm sorry, say that again. Sure. Looking at the pictures, it's kind of hard for me to figure out if I'm looking at a at the house um, behind it, or am I looking at the house? Uh, on one of your pictures, I guess the four, fourth picture in, it That's shows... The back of that house? Yes. That's not 50, uh, 53. That's 53? Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's the back of the house, not the front of the house. That's the back so, of the house. So yeah. you're looking at the back of the pool deck, um, I taking was, a picture of 53. I was kind of standing in the middle of the pool. Okay, so you're back there looking out. So it looks like that, that house is somewhere between the front of the pool house and uh, somewhere near the back of the parking spaces. Yeah, it's... it's That's how far it's set back. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also on your conditions, you're recommending heavily screened... Um, provide a heavy landscape screening adjacent to the residential properties. So I want to just clarify that. You're talking about the area between lots 52 and 53 on each side, just to make sure that I'm understanding that. You're not talking about anywhere in the back of the property. And uh, I'm just trying to understand to what extent are we trying to screen it, I guess, along the commons side property line of 52 and and this property and then along the common side property line of 53 up to the sewer easement is that kind of what you're thinking or um you're, you, the DRB's thought was definitely along lots 52 and 53 and then just looking at um, the first picture that was in your packet sure Okay, I see 59. The only thing that's down there is detention ponds, the detention pond. Right. But, um, I would think pr primarily we would wind up there by the amenities themselves. Okay. So you're typically saying behind, uh, or on the side property line of 53 and 52, and then along the I guess again it would be the side property line of 58. Right. But I think would you ask it to stop once it gets past the tennis courts? Well, we didn't. We didn't state where it had to start. Stop. We okay. Along the residential property. Okay. That technically, would be all of them. Right, and then um, on the <coughs> tennis courts, are they to be lit? Um, I imagine it doesn't affect it because really the very probably doesn't affect the tennis court per se. Well, the tennis courts are existing and they do have lights, yes. And they're back more than 100 the feet off the street. They're 100 feet off the street, but they're, they're not 100 feet from oh, east to west. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions to staff from the board? Yes, sir. Uh, it's stated in the packet that the parking was within the 100 feet on both the north south, both the north and the south lines. Um, that would be the signs. Two signs. Well, they, they said east and west. 53 is the west and 52 is the east. Is 52 the, um, the lot that's, that's unoccupied or is it 59? Yes. So this is the unoccupied. The only house on that end is on 53. And 59, what, what's the situation with that one? It's a lot. I don't think there's a house there. Okay, so it's just a vacant lot. So this, yeah. is, this is not a picture because it's insured. The back, right? Yeah. 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 Picture card. I think it's a token area. That's over the last couple of pictures. Yeah. 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 Uh, where, where I'm going with my Where I'm going with my questioning, Angela, is I want to be sure that every property owner that's within 100 feet 
at least knows this is going on. I know we put the blue sign out there. Was there any other notification? The paper, uh, notice in the paper, um, and then letters go out to property owners within 300 feet. Okay, so the letters did go out to anyone. Okay. Yeah, you know, the developer is the main property owner right now. So. Right. Well, I'm thinking that you said there were some lots outside of the yeah, subdivision, too. Yeah, down there by the, well, kind of in the middle to the right, so Judith. Judith and John Martin, and I think everything else is in the subdivision. Okay. And the Martins were on the list of recip mail recipients. Okay, that's all I have. Oh, one more question. Go ahead. The plan, a very back plan, mentions chain link fence. Is that what's being proposed? around this pool and pool house. What plan mentions that? It mentions in the very big sheet you gave us that shows the whole site plan. It uh -huh. says here, um, at the very top, all chain link fence shall be black vital clad. I don't know if that's referring to the tennis court fence or is that referring also to the pool fence? They do indicate two types of fence on this plan with the uh, line and a circle on it. And I'm just trying to understand what they're using. I know they've got to protect the pool. Well, I don't think they can use that. Well, they can't use uh, chain link around the pool. I believe chain link is around the tennis court. It looks like you have horse fence around the detention pond. Right. So, yeah. The, uh, well, the, the plan is showing. This is black bottle fence, so I think that. Right. That. I don't think we'd let them use chain like on the floor. Okay, I just want to make sure. Any other questions to staff from the board? At this time, we'd like to invite the applicant to come forward to please present, and if you would state your name and address before you speak for the city, we'd certainly appreciate it. Suite 701, Alpharetta right for Triple Oak 5. Um, basically, first of all, thank you for your time this evening. Got a bit of an awkward situation here um, with the timing of this. Um, we bought these lots uh, from a bank. Uh, we closed on them last year. Uh, the plaque was recorded in um, March of 2008. I'm sorry, February 18th of 2008. And this amenity area, as y'all have already been discussing, was always part of the land plan, from what we understand. Uh, the property was developed by Richard Warren, um, and this was, uh, again, always part of. I've got the set of amenity drawings here, which were a separate drawing from the plat uh, drawings and engineer drawings. And I, I pulled these out today, and what we've got is uh, something I've got a copy of here, where this went through the city of Milton, and it was, it was stamped and approved by everybody. And so we, as Sharp Residential, we built a few houses in there, several have closed so far. We proceeded to build the amenity area. We got the permit uh, for the pool house and the tennis courts. I think that was a combined permit, is that right, Brandon? Yeah, combined permit there. Then when we went to get the permit for the pool, this issue developed or, or, or came, to, came to light. And it obviously took us completely by surprise because everything had been approved. We got the permit to build the pool house and the tennis courts, uh, which are currently built now. We're about to go to sheetrock on the pool house. The tennis courts are in, except for the final code. And to answer your question on the fencing, there's vinyl chain link around the tennis courts, standard 10 foot, and we are doing a five foot wrought iron uh, you know, picket fence around the swimming pool. Uh, it's gonna connect the pool house and all that, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, but, um, obviously, we're asking for relief on this scenario. Uh, we've certainly invested a lot of money at this point in time. Um, the orientation of this amenity area is clearly publicized in all of our literature. Uh, in fact, the gentleman, Mr. Baker on 53, he selected Lot 53 as a pre-sale 
And part of that reason, uh, what I understand, is that there was next to the amenity here. So he didn't have a problem with it. He knows it's going to be there. And we have not built on the other adjoining lots at this point in uh, time. To further answer one of the questions that came up, uh, this is the landscaping plan here. I don't know if y'all have a copy of this in your information, but this was approved by Mr. Law of the City Arbor. And uh, basically, here is lot 52 right here. Here's 53, here's 59. You can see that the landscape plan goes all the way down the property line, turns the corner, and gets very solid relief for lot number 52. It uh, also on the other side for 53 and 59 comes all the way down to the area of the detention pond that is existing in the Fort Smith River in this hotel. The tennis courts as well, they will be lighted. Uh, you can see that there is a three sided screening of the tennis courts as well. But all of this is natural area back here. There are clearing limits, uh, uh, as noted here, there's a stream, stream buffer, all of that. So it's certainly very particular with regard to what we can disturb for the original plan. So all of this, again, uh, has been out there for a long time. We kind of inherited this by purchase, if you want to call it that. And we're, again, asking for relief uh, for the obvious reasons. Any questions? Yes, sir. Um, I can't see your landscape plan being, being that this far away. Um, can you describe or hand us that plan and tell us what kind of shrubs you're proposing and, and such? Uh, what we've got, uh, the larger circles, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, your landscape plan. Can I come in here? I, mean, I don't know how far you guys can see. Go ahead and actually, if you use the microphone, you're not that much different from you. Basically, uh, the circles with the different uh, symbols inside them represent you know, different species of trees, plants, that kind of thing. But basically, uh, the fellow actually I did this math here, we've got 16 red maples going in. Size? Uh, uh, let's see. Let's Again, this was designed by yeah. uh, yeah. landscape park that, uh, right oh, But when, I guess I was concerned, I know Mr. Law may have approved it back five or six years ago, but uh, this plan was just approved just recently. You said this plan was approved by Mr. Law. Uh, my understanding is, is that when we applied for the permit for the pool house itself, sure. and that was granted, that there was a meeting on site with Mark Law, and this is my project manager here, we met on site with Mark, also Mark Law and Mark Errol, I believe, the erosion inspector. Sure. So all of this has been reviewed recently okay. by the, um, the city officials. Okay. So you've got red maples. We've got uh, red maples, red bright myrtles, nandinas, junipers, cryptomeria, wax myrtles, white oaks, and it all adds up to about 220 or so. Yeah, a lot of those plants have no screening at all. That's why I was trying okay, to... Okay, certainly. Because Nandinas, I mean, I can use my bush hat and cover more area okay. for screening. Um, but anyway, okay, I just wanted to understand what what you had presented. Certainly. Because seeing the conditions that the Design Review Board was asking for was a screening, and then also the staff was recommending that, uh, that there should be a screen from the adjoining residential property owners with a plan approved by the city arborist. So okay. I was just trying to understand. And normally when I hear screening, mm -hmm. I'm normally thinking that it's an evergreen, okay. that it's, you know, fairly tall and, and, and something that would block views and such. So that's what I was trying to understand okay. what you were talking about versus, versus uh, something like this. And Mr. Law may not have known at the time this was coming up. So he may have just 
approved it saying, okay, that's something. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand. Was there no other lot on this property you could possibly have moved this uh, recreation area to? No, uh, I don't believe so. Again, we were not the original developer, as I stated. And looking at this piece, we actually transitioned from sewer lots to separate tank lots. Uh, so there was some sort of uh, some engineering that went into uh, to that scenario. Uh, Rodney and Scott Reese were the engineers. I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. Uh, basically, uh, this is on sewer. However, it transitions to septic lots back here. This area, lot 52, and then lots 39, uh, currently planted in Columbia. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be coming in the future phase. Um, so, with that being said, my assumption is that this was the correct spot for the amenity area for the neighborhood. Uh, and again, it is adjacent to the detention pond here uh, on the front side, which I think I mentioned earlier, just along the main road. And you can actually see the amenity area when you come to the main road. You have to go around and get to the entrance of it. Uh, but uh, again, with the lot layout, it is currently adjacent to only three lots in the neighborhood out of the 63 that are going to be in there, that being 52, 53, and 50. And, and the reason I ask that question is just looking at the plan, there shows an out parcel um, that's on the, um, I guess, owned by uh, uh, John and Judith Martin. Okay. And it looks like there's an out parcel up through there. Was, uh, was that something that's going to be a future phase of the project? Is that... I, I guess uh, the, where I'm looking at is where I'm uh, looking at is I mean I, I see your plan I see your plan here but um, I'm looking over here right that is but again it's kind of awkward I'll have with the property here uh, the uh, property is uh, uh, that is not part of this um, the group dress starts at 61, and on the right side of the road go in. There's this other out parcel here that is on the other side of the market property. Right. Uh, which are going to be two lots at some point in time is the plan for those. So basically the neighborhood is going to kind of wrap around the market property. But as you can tell, there is a creek going through there, creek buffer undisturbed area. It's well over 300 feet from the tennis court. Which is the closest part of our game <coughs> to sure. the piece of property. So, and, and again, none of that's going to be disturbed. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kerber? Okay. You're good? Yes. He asked my question. Mm -hmm. about this. Any other questions for the applicant from the board? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> this time we'd like to open the floor for public comment if there is any. Being none, does the does the applicant want to make a closing statement? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear what we're asking. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. There was mention of a letter of support. Uh, yes. Would you care to comment on that? Uh, this was from uh, this was I believe the form that we got from the city. This is from Mr. Baker, the gentleman that owns Lot 53. Can you hand that to yes, staff? Any other question? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Any questions to staff from the board? Yes, sir. The comment was made that these plans were approved and they were allowed to start construction. So basically their parking lot and building has been started at pool. Is is that true? Is that so how did this come up after the fact? I mean just out of curiosity. Because I kind of hate to stop them. Here they are halfway through. And this is they, got the, they got the LDP for the rec area. And for whatever reason, it just didn't come up. I don't okay. know. That was back in 2008. I honestly don't know. Um, okay. I mean, things happen. I mean, I'm not perfect. My <laughs> wife tells me at least once a day. <laughs> so. They have their pool permit for the, for the house, for the pool house. That's existing. They got... I don't think they got a permit for the tennis courts, but they're, uh, and then they came in to get a permit for the pool itself, and then that's when all the bells went off. So, they originally got the permit in 2008, 
Does your permits expire after two years? Do they have to come back and re-permit it? Um, they do after a certain number of times if you haven't been working or getting inspections, but I don't that I don't, I don't think this expires. Is this a situation where we could ask them to re-permit this, that way these other issues could be cleared up? In particular, I'm concerned with a plan that might have approval of a chain link fence. And, and I know they're saying they're going with one type of fence, and, but um, I don't want that to be misconstrued either. Well, we can clear the fence up with the pool permit. I don't think it's been issued yet. I, I think okay. it's going to be one of the variants, and we can clear that up with the pool permit. Okay. And as far as the screening, is that something you just going to have to go back and get a new plan approved by the arborist if we, if we did see a condition to do that? The DRB, you know, is aware of the existing approved landscape plan, but they wanted it kind of beefed up. So they will have to submit a revised plan to get that if we did if pass for it. Okay. Okay. So it gives you another shot. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions to staff? This time the public hearing is closed and the floor is open for a motion. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion for approval of V11-018. This is to allow a variance to allow a neighborhood recreation court, accessory structure, fencing, and parking to be located less than 100 feet from a property line, and two, to allow a neighborhood pool pool equipment and deck to be less than 100 feet from the property lines with the condition that the applicant shall um, shall uh, cause the amenity area should be screened from the adjoining property owners and planting plan to be approved by the city arborist. Uh, that's my motion, Chair, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a second? A second. So we have a Let me explain why I made that motion. Um, I think this is a situation where from day one, the intent of this parcel was always to make this a recreation lot. Um, that uh, they have started this structure, they have been under construction, and uh, to make them go back and start all over seems like that would be a, be a hardship, and I think the intent from day one from the plan that they showed us was that this was going to be a recreation area. Uh, the permits were issued by the city staff, perhaps in error, back in 2008, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, this, this uh, project was approved. I don't believe that approving of this plan would be a su substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties, especially if they are going to go with some kind of heavy screening uh, along the property lines. I think the public health, safety, welfare can be secured and substantially justice is done, provided again that they go with the recommended conditions uh, as far as the exceptional situation. Uh, again, I think this is a, a piece of property that uh, had always been con considered a common area um, and uh, the topography perhaps wasn't the best for making it residential, in particular for septic tank or whatever else, and I feel like relief of granted would not offend the spirit of the intent of the ordinance. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, we had some discussion about the definition of adjoining properties and I think it makes sense to um, clarify that in this motion um, their landscape plan clearly addresses lots 53 and 59 as being adjacent as well as lot 52 and they also provided a provision to screen the three sides of the tennis courts which would provide a screening for uh, the Martin property as an out parcel uh, I'm I'm suggesting that we should probably beef up that term adjoining property by defining that so it's clear for the arborist and staff what screening we're looking for is that something that the, the, the one I was real, the one I was real concerned about and, and I'll be honest the code specifically says it's the hundred foot from adjoining properties the Martin's property in particular is well over a hundred feet so I didn't feel like that was an area I was particularly concerned about screening 
Not that's that's not saying that's not right. I'm just saying that that uh, that's why I just I would have assumed that was just like you said, uh, 52, 53, and and 59, and not so much towards the rear. But again, that's up to the well. Rear. The reason I would thought the rear would maybe also be important is that that's a light amenity. And sure. so if you got tennis going on 10, 11 o'clock at night, that's right into the... The condition, I read, was said adjoining residential property, so we could uh, mean that if we wanted to put in a parenthesis and say which ones we are, that's fine with me. Yes, sir? Uh, just a suggestion. I don't know if this would be logistically feasible, but the applicant did have a landscape plan. If we could get that before us and, and read officially into the record that we could reference that. I don't think say that, 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 that plan See I'm not sure I'm real thrilled with the type of plants they use. That's why I wasn't real thrilled about yeah. it. However the location of, of the plantings is what we're this trying what, to replicate. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Not the yeah. type but the the location. But if you said the same thing, you said okay, um, uh, you know, I would like to amend it and say further amend uh, the joining resident property to include lots uh, 52, 53, 59, 60, and the out parcel owned by Judith L. Martin. Uh, that would do the same thing, and uh, and that way you you cover all five properties, I guess, um, if that's your concern. I I hate to reference a plan where perhaps the arborist didn't think about this issue, and they may come back with instead of. Nandina as they come back with well, Holly. We could reference the plan, but not necessarily the mix of the plantings, but, but only sure. with respect to where the landscaping will be applied. Well, I think even that's there, what Mr. Is even there I'm saying I, I, they may want to go further, further well, more well, plants well, on each we, side. We, we won't the limit them to that, but we want a minimum. And I think that's what Mr. Turnick is looking for, is because they referenced, I think what they referenced, sure. should be happy with, right? The, the, Location this, this entire right, this entire line and this. Can we get that around, landscape and, plan? And you know, if we can just reference that as a tool for describing. Can we get your existing it. landscape plan. Sure, I think I've got one right in here. Do we need this in the I don't know if this is something that you have reference. But again, that is all part of the um, set of plans that's on file with the city in here. So the four tables display again. I don't think that's appropriate for it, but. Well, can we see the plan? We just need to read a few things in the record. Yeah. I think if we can just craft it around. Mr. Chair, yeah. is that? I, I have a problem with this. <coughs> you guys are happy, I'm happy. <laughs> I just want to we're not interested in the mix. We'll leave that. You open. want to offer the amendment? Come on. I'll help. Uh, I mean, I think we, we want to reference. Can you do it? By this can you do it by yeah, yeah, like I agree with that. And, and, and this, and these lines. Uh, if you can get these distances on these well, property I think lines. If you get the lot, the lot things, you get the same thing. Uh, not necessarily. Well, maybe, maybe where these cross. The There's a topography lines. issue here, right? There's a huge drop off. Yeah. If you look, see, yeah. that's why they planned yeah. it there. Because right. I think if you hit the lot numbers, you hit it. Which would make it easier for us and easier. Yeah, for I agree. 52, 53, 59. So we got 60. Over and 60. I don't even see Over 60. here. Okay. And the out parcel owned by Judith L. Martin. Right. Yeah. I think that's what we said as well. So that would provide a screen for here. That. Does that cover everything? Yeah, I think so. So can you just add that to the motion? No, we have to amend it. No, we, we, he, can't, he can't amend his own motion. Yeah. Well, so, uh, okay, I'll okay. offer a amendment. amendment if you don't want to do it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling with how to word this. I, I'm just trying to make sure we have it here. Here and here, and how we say that. Well, you know. Okay, well, let, me, let, me, let me mention one more thing. If you look at the last picture, and, and again, I'm not familiar with the, the property, if there's not a row of trees there already between 60 and the out parcel, because there is a creek and a spring head, which to me typically tells me there's some kind of hardwoods and everything else. And don't get me wrong, I'm, you know, I don't mind micromanaging if that's what you all want to do, but I, I'm, I, I don't know. We can ask. Angela, if there's trees there or not, which you may or may not remember. So look, on, look on page 11. Right. Look at the tennis court, which is existing. And look at the house that you see off in the distance to the right. Which would be further reason to make sure that there's some screening around that tennis court. Which uh, top of the top picture. Top picture. I guess I don't see it. 
It just says kind of dark right here. back there, but you can see it. Here, look on mine. There it is right there. And that, that I'm assuming, is lot 60. I just didn't. That's got to be lot 60. Yeah, that must be lot 60. Just it does look like the uh, the Martin property would be screened from the tennis courts. Yeah, it does. But, you know. So let's just specify 52, 53, 59, and 60. Well, but we, we could also say to Martin and, and put it in there because it's already screened and I'm doing things. Yeah. Well, let's so put okay. it in. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah. just say planting locations as depicted on this plan. All right. And all then. Right. I don't even think I, we want to reference that. I think I agree, with, I think I agree with Walton. Okay. And uh, right, so, so do your do, okay. do your. I got offer a friendly amendment um, stating that further defining adjoining, adjoining property as being lots 52, 53, 59, 60, as well as the out parcel currently owned by the Martins, as depicted in the. Plans submitted by uh, drawn just by Brumble. Just reference the subdivision. Vickery Crest subdivision um, plan dated May 28, 2010. Second. Any discussion on the friendly amendment? Amendment. So we have amendment to. Further defined. Further defined adjoining properties as lots number 52, 53, 59, 60, and the out parcel owned by the Martin family, which is on the Vickery Crest subdivision plat dated 528, 2010. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Passed unanimously. We have a motion to approve and a second V11-018 to allow a neighborhood recreation court, a sex structure, fencing, and parking to be located less than 100 feet from the property lines, and to allow a neighborhood pool, pool equipment, and deck to be located less than 100 feet from the property lines. <clears throat> and the amenity area should be screened from adjoining residential properties. The planting plan should be approved by the city arborist. That word you said again. Planting. Uh, with uh, additional. With the, the, the planting or the um, adjoining residential properties further defined. And the as, adjoining <laughs> residential properties further defined as lot 52, 53, 59, 60, and the out parcel owned by the Martin family, which is all on the Vickery Crest, Crest subdivision plot which is dated 5-28-2010. All in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose, same side. Pass unanimously. Good luck, guys. Good luck. The thing popped off Angela, but I guess the next thing would be old business. I thought there was another plan, or is that not? You know, I oh, think they I did the wrong plan. Probably asked for 11, and I did an 18. Do they need their plan back? Oh, guys, do you want this? No, we don't. No, we're done. No, this is good. Yes. This is good. No, we didn't reference that one. Yeah, yeah. We referenced the one that was yeah, here. included. No, no, staff needs this. That's for Angela? Yes. Yeah. From the state this time. The applicant is waiting for the state to uh, make their decision. I can't do what I need to do for the state this Is this a stream buffer issue? Stream buffer, flood plain, flood way, flood road. Lots of issues. Well, do we have to make a motion then to, to yes, refer to that? And again, that's uh, what me. What now? Come on, Lita, take it away. <laughs> it was, that's why I just said it was up, but it went away. Gotcha. Right. I'm with you. 
No, Rita's going to yeah, do it. Okay, Rita's going to do it. Rita's going to do it. Rita's going to make a motion to defer. I make a motion to defer. What did you, it was V? V11011. 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 Uh, a second. Discussion. All in favor of deferring V11-011, raise your right hand. Opposed, same side. Passed unanimously. Any old business, other business, new business? Who would like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Adjourn. Thank you, folks. Hey, uh,
Cheryl, there's too many of us where we can make an announcement. I was just playing soccer, right? So public. Uh, well, my coach was coach. Well, so I'm going to just get back. Well, we, we won something. We'll just well, yeah. So, so we, we won the reservations. So we, 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 so we could go probably get well, games and get yes. free to <laughs>
sometimes it has just really grown. But it's a it's a nice campus. It's not a bad drive from here either. No, it's just five and a half quick. hours. It's quick drive. Right through Charlotte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's right there. So uh, what you major in? Um, I started off as an architecture major and mm -hmm. I wound up finished with urban affairs. And okay. And then uh, I started at Ohio State Press where I wound up translating books now. Okay. Thank you. 